We have no sound online. If they're going to sing, we'd like to hear them. Christmas bells are ringing, caroling, caroling near and far. Christmas bells are ringing, following, following yonder star. Christmas bells are ringing, sing we all this happy morn. Lo, the King of Heaven is born. Ding dong, ding dong, Christmas bells are ringing. Love an appreciative audience. Good morning. I'm Carmela Southers, she, her, um, and I will be your worship associate this morning. If you're joining as a guest or a first time visitor, we're glad you're here. You're invited to leave your contact information at the welcome table in the foyer. We look forward to getting to know you. Everyone is invited, invited to fill out a card about a personal significant joy or concern that you would like shared during the service. You may pick up and leave your card at the joys and concerns table in the back of the room. It's in that far corner. Our pastoral care team member will collect the cards and read them later in the service. Here at the UUFF, we strive to nurture learning inspire spiritual insights, create compassionate relationships, and lovingly transform our community and the world. Please join us after the service for coffee and conversation. Now I invite all of us to greet one another. People online, if you've muted your audio or video, please take a moment now to unmute so that we can all greet one another face to face. Hi, everybody. Hello, Good morning. Oh, look at the travelers. <laughs> Can you see them? Oh, yeah. Lean in. There you go. Hey. Hi, Michael. Hey. It is so good. It is so good to have you with us today. Susan? These words are by Elizabeth Wynn. I've not always been my best self in the communities I've loved. I've shirked dish duty at Lucy Stone and missed weddings in my hometown. I've dropped out when I was needed and showed up full of pettiness and exhaustion. The wonder of accepting love is only made evident when we're allowed to shed the shiny and let the sourness show. Our communities of spirit are only real because we show up late expecting to be fed, because we both give and get, because we bring our tart and our sweet, our gifts and our struggles, 
We need lemon in the lentils, rice vinegar in the sushi, a squeeze of lime in the chalada and some acid in our communities. Without it, our communities are superficial. With no acid, we are one note, monotone. Our vulnerabilities, our bits of brokenness bring life to our relationships. We are part of community when we show up shiny and not so shiny when we ladle soup into each other's bowls and eat it eagerly, when we bring our sour and our sweet, when we shed the shiny and show up hungry. Come, let us worship together. Please. Join me in reading the chalice lighting words, or just listen. When we see a neighbor in need, when we see a child in pain, love reaches out. When we see a hand that needs to be held, or a soul that desperately needs a hug, love reaches out. When the neighbor in our community cries out for help or comfort, love reaches out. May this little flame we light today remind us that when we are given an opportunity, our love too must reach out. Our opening hymn this morning is number 1058 in your teal hymnal, Be Ours a Religion. Please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing. Mm So good morning and welcome. I'm grabbing a chair real quick. My name is Chris Johns. I am the Director of Lifespan Religious Education here at the Fellowship. I will be leading our Wonder Box today, but I am also wearing a dress, so I'm gonna sit here. Um, so I would like to invite our little ones to come on up and have a seat. Yes, and I, I uh, so the, the, hi, Brand, how are you today? Would you like to come? You don't have to if you don't want to, but you are welcome. And anybody else who wants to come and help? All right. So uh, today's Wonder Box, actually, um, today's Wonder Box, the theme of this month um, is wonder. Hey, John Adams, come on up, bud. The theme of this month, Soul Matters theme, is wonder. And the theme of this service is wondering what we would be as community, right? So, um, oh, look how fancy. Hello, friends. You, these people are dressed for the holidays. Mm. Um, hi, friends. Welcome, welcome. All right. So, um, and you know what? But I was realizing, I was thinking about community, and I just, I absolutely love the reading that Susan Park did. But I just realized, I, I did show up a little hungry. I'm a little, I'm kind of a little hungry. So um, I'm hoping there's something really good in the wonder box that'll kind of help me feel less hungry. Well, I think, would you like to open the wonder box? In a year, I, I don't think we were here last year, to be honest, but you can come help me if you want. <gasps> what is in the wonder box? Clay, do you, what is that? 
Oh, there's a box. Okay. What else do we have? Well, hey, B, welcome. Oh, we have a spoon. Oh, we have right and a, and a pot. What? Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to put this over here for a second. Thank you. Uh, what, what will we do? Oh, look, it says instant community soup. Good and good for you. Huh? So I guess community is good, but it's, oh, it's instant. Wait, are there directions? Ah, would you hold that spoon for me? Cause we might have to do some stirring instructions. Just add water, love and kindness and enjoy ready in minutes. Excellent. Okay. So, um, oh, there's tiny words. Wait, hold on. The tiny words say, oh, gluten and nut free. Excellent. Okay. Well, so I, um, the big thing, this is not ready to eat and I, I am hungry. So I guess we're just going to have to make some soup. So when you're thinking about community, cause this is community soup, like love and kindness. Yeah. Will you put that in the pot? Just stick it right there in the pot. We're going to get it working. We're going to get it in the pot. Okay. You, well, hold on to the spoon. You might need to do some stirring. All right. So when we think about community, right? Love and kindness, are those good things to have as part of our community? You would think so? Absolutely. But you know, I like my community soup to be a little richer, right? Love and kindness is great, but I feel like we need a little more flavor. So what are some things that we could add to our soup? Yes, excuse me, B has her hand up. So I'm gonna call on B first. Yes, B, what else? We could add tomatoes to our community soup. Excellent. Tomato, community tomato soup. All right, I'm gonna add some tomatoes. Boop. What else could we add to our community soup? Go ahead, Clay. We could add some vegetables. Yeah, because actually tomatoes are a fruit, so we do want some vegetables in there too. Bye, genius. Okay, but what? thinking about what we need, so these things are great to have in soup. I'm gonna throw our vegetables in the soup. But thinking about things that we want for our community, what do you think we might wanna add, Tate? Yumminess, it's good to have a yummy community. Absolutely. Yumminess, yep, gonna add some yumminess to our soup. Evelyn, I saw Evelyn's hand up. Thinking about community, what could we put in our soup that would be good for our, to make a good, rich community soup? Hmm. Say that again. Everyone helps clean up stuff. So I think putting, having helpful people in our community is probably good. I saw uh, Tate and then John Adams. Tate. What do you think? Oh, diverse spices in our community soup. Diverse. Very cool. I think we'll add, um, John Adams, let's add what you have on your mind. And then maybe we'll see if anybody has any thoughts out here. Go ahead, John Adams. Oh. We do need generosity in our communities. Wait, I forgot to put diversity in our soup. Hold on. Generosity, yes. All right, hold on, I'm gonna call. Does anyone out there have any thoughts about things we could put in our community soup? Yes, Jackson, love. We already have love in our soup, but you know, you can never have too much love. So we'll put generosity and a little extra pinch of love. You know, sometimes I add extra stuff. That, this, that it doesn't call for. All right, one more thing. Let's go with Drake because you said one already. Let me go with Drake, okay? You are so, this guy is so smart though. What do you think, Drake? And we're gonna add care. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, it looks like we are gonna have some delicious, I'm not gonna put the pen in the soup because that will be yucky. Um, can you give it a stir for me though, Clay? Give it a stir. All right, so I'm gonna put our soup over here to simmer. Oh, I don't, I didn't see a date on it. No, I think we're good. So hopefully our, our community soup is not expired. All right, well, I'm gonna put our community soup over here to simmer for a little while. Oh, I'll take the spoon. Here, just stick it in the pot. 
All right. And thank you so much for helping me make some soup. And thank you to everyone out there. Go on back to your seats. Thank you, friends. Yum, community soup. During the offertory, you're invited to come forward and silently place a pebble into the bowl of water for any joys and concerns you're holding in your heart. It's right up here. The ministries of this fellowship continue to wholly depend on the generosity of spirit from our friends and members. If you are online, we encourage you to donate via text message or by visiting our website and using the online donation form on our homepage. We will post the text number and link in the chat and on the screen. Greeters will be coming around with a basket for in-person donations. Carol the Bell is also called the Ukrainian Bell Carol. So this morning we dedicate our performance to the good people of Ukraine. <laughs> May all that has been shared and freely given here help us to grow in generosity and caring for the world of which we are a part. Diane. Good morning, everyone. I'm Diane Elstein, and I'm a member of the pastoral care team, and my pronouns are she and her. So hello again, I'm still Chris. Um, and oh, I forgot to say earlier that I do use she, her pronouns. Um, so now is the time when my, uh, I have to send my beautiful, beautiful cast to places because it is 
time for the pageant. And while they are getting themselves situated, and I do, hey friends, I wanna remind you to be quiet back there on the sides. And also if you are taller than our incredible uh, sight blockers to duck. We were playing duck, duck, goose yesterday. Um, so yeah, so today the pageant that you're going to see is the giving ball. And actually I, I need to set up a couple of things. So I'm gonna take this with me, Just follow me. Um, the pageant that we're seeing, oh, Oh, is for now? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can I leave it right here for now? Thank you, Tony. I got a card from Tony. Thank you, Tony. Actually, I'll just, I'll take it with me and I'll put it where my chair is. Okay, so um, the pageant that you're going to see is called The Giving Bowl. And this is a pageant that I wrote seven years ago. And uh, I have to put my card down. Thank you, Tony. Um, I wrote it seven years ago, and there are actually three reasons that I wrote this service or this uh, pageant, so I want to share that with you very quickly. The first reason was because that was the year we had a brand new reverend. We had just called Reverend Doug, and I wanted to do something special for his first pageant here at the fellowship. The second thing is, whoops, sorry. The second thing is that when I was driving home, and of course, you know, when you say, okay, I'm going to write a new pageant, it just doesn't, you know, you know, magically appear. And I didn't know what I was going to write about, but I was driving home from my professional conference and I heard a song uh, by a group called Emma's Revolution that I had been introduced to at the conference. And they, uh oh, sad. Um, and they had a song called Where Are You Now, which you're going to hear in a little while. And that song, inspired me and the pageant was pretty much written by the time I got home from Baltimore. And the third reason and um, is there was a gentleman, Robert, long time ago when I was working in New York City, there was a gentleman named Robert and Robert was homeless, but Robert was really a good guy and we became friends and I stopped giving him money, but I would get things for him. I would get his meds that he needed or get him a lunch or if he needed a shirt for an interview, I'd grab him a shirt. And the last time I saw Robert, he looked so sick. And he gave me a piece of paper on it. And it said his name and his social security number. And he said, I want you to have this because I want somebody to know that I was alive. So the person that you see, um, when you see Reverend Doug playing his role, I want you to think of Robert because that role is written for him. And without further ado, I can see the choir is just chomping to sing. Without further ado, I give you the giving bowl. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Unto them a son is given. What? Unto them a son is given. Actually, unto them a daughter is given. Oh, well that works too. Shall we begin? There was once a man who loved a woman. And she loved him back. 
And unto them a daughter was given. And the little one grew. And grew. And grew. They were a fine family. And they loved each other very much. They were happy and all was well. And all was well. And all manner of things were well. Beautiful home. Beautiful life. So fortunate. But then one day. No, wait. Hold on. This is not a sad story. It will seem sad at times, but then it will all be okay. Why are you telling them this? Well, they're starting to look a little worried, and I don't want them to worry. Okay, well, now I've lost my place. Okay, so then one day. Yes, but then one day it all changed and something went wrong. What? Did father get sick? Did mother lose her job? Did the baby, did someone else die? No, no, no one died. To be honest, I'm not sure what happened. I didn't want to pry. These things are so personal and can cause such shame and pain. I didn't want to risk upsetting them. But little by little, they lost their things. They were sold or taken away until finally. I'm sorry. It's okay. Maybe Kitty will make another kid happy. You find him a good home, okay? Promise? Pinky swear? Pinky swear. It was all gone. And they were forced to leave their home. Go. go where? I don't know, monkey. And look for shelter. Somewhere pretty? We'll see. Where did you stay? Do you have food? Are you okay? Where did you sleep? Are you in peace? Where are you now? Where are you now? What will be left of the lives we have made when the storm breaks? And the winds fade. Will we find hope? Will we find greed when the skies clear and the waters recede? Where are you now? Where did you stay? Do you have food? Are you okay? Where did you sleep? Are you in peace? Where are you now? Where are you now? They searched until they found a dry place where they could rest and stay for a while. This is pretty. From there, father would go out and search. For work? For food. For help. There were kind strangers. Oh, thank you. And not so kind strangers. Yeah. But they found more good than bad and they managed to survive. As little as they had, they had each other and that would be enough. Soon the weather turned cold and as the temperature dropped, their anxiety grew. Thanksgiving came. People at St. George's were very nice. They were. And that cake was really good. Thanks to the kindness of caring people, the family had eaten their fill that day. But it was all too clear that the holidays would be very different this year.
Mom? Yes, Marky? Is it Christmas? Not yet, but almost. I don't think Santa will be able to find me here. I hope so. I don't know. It's okay. He has so many other kids to worry about, and they have a lot less than I do. Aww. I love this kid. Me too. <laughs> Before the 25th, when the child was still asleep, I hate to do it. What choice do we have? It's begging. Don't think of it like that. Think of it as doing what you have to do. I love you. I love you. Dad? It was a horrible time. No, no. Things were about to get way better. Would you stop that? She had a very concerned look on her face, and fine, I'll stop. It was a chilly day, but it was pretty out, crisp. While father was off, mother and her child bundled themselves up and decided to take a walk to the park in the library, and they both felt a little bit better about things. I think today is going to be a good day. Me too. Mm -hmm. Can we look at the decorations? Of course. Father found a busy corner, a bowl, and a sign. Just trying to take care of my family, it read. Most people pass without a word or even a glance. Some would drop a coin or two, but... I'm sorry, I only have plastic. Was a common excuse. One child stopped and asked for some money to give, but was tugged along by her mother. It's okay. Just as father was about to give up for the day. That's the wrong bow. What? I told you that's the wrong bow. It's not good enough. Okay. Why? You're on a journey, right? You're homeless? I am. And you have a family? Yes, oh. I have a, a wife and a daughter. That's good. So you're not alone on this journey? Uh, I guess not, but why do you keep calling it that? What? A journey? Well, because it is one. If you think about it, we're all on a journey. This one is yours. It's not an easy one. And I can't predict how long this particular journey will take you. There are no quick fixes here. What do you want? A home. Safety and security, but mainly a home. Well, that boat certainly isn't going to help you with any of those things. Here, take this one. Okay, I'll take this one. Good, it's much better. Oh, and I must tell you something, though, about the bow. There's a secret. What is it? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, now would it? I guess not. Oh, and... Here was a little something cool. to get you started. Thank you. It is a nice bowl. Father stopped on the way home to buy a meal with the money from the new bowl. Home? Well, what else would you call it? They say home is where the heart is. His heart is with his family, so wherever they are is his home. Point taken. Continue. Thank you. Father stopped on the way home to buy a meal with the money from the new bowl. Our little family ate well that night while they pondered the bowl. Why did that person give it to you? I don't know. They said this one was better. 
Where's the old one? They took it. Why? I don't know. They said this one was better and that it would help us on our journey, but we had to figure out the secret. Well, here's to our new bowl and figuring out the secret. Here, here. Here, here. That night. Wait. Okay. Here's where it gets good. Could you please, for the love of all that is holy, stop that? <laughs> I can't help it. I'm super excited about what's coming up next. That night, while the little family slept, a wonderful thing happened. As if by magic, something was put in the bowl. <clears throat> an apple! I, I don't know. Maybe Dad can get us an apple. We'll have to see. No, an apple in the bowl. And it's good. Where does it come from? I don't know. Maybe that's the secret of the bowl, that things magically appear. That's fine with me. And the next night, while the family slept, something else was placed in the bowl. Cookies, look. Where did you find those? They were in the bowl. That's crazy. I know. Mother and father laughed for the first time in a long time. And those cookies were delicious. Mom, mm -hmm. you can have the last one. No, Monkey, it's yours. Share? Sure. I am the luckiest guy on the planet. The two of you and cookies, what could be better? And the next night. Another present from the bowl fairy. Fred, good Fred. <laughs> Yum, it's warm. Mm. Some of the bread. Yeah. Well, there's not much, and there's three of us. Oh, sorry to bother you. I I wish we could. I, I wish we had enough to share. Don't don't worry about it. Wait, he can have mine. I'm little. I don't eat much. No, it it's good. I hope you find more food. You too. How could they possibly scold her for what she had done? Their child was so good. They went to sleep that night with hearts filled with pride. And while they slept, a gold. Oh. How? It's because we shared. Maybe that's the secret of the bowl? I don't know. I guess time will tell. Later, after spending the day on his corner, Father found he had much change in his bowl, enough for a good meal for his family and a little left over. Uh, sorry, sorry to bother you, but do uh, you think you could spare some change? With just the tiniest moment of hesitation, knowing there was a full bowl of bread waiting for him, Father said, Of course, here, here, take it all. We have enough at home. Are you sure? Yeah, it's okay. Take it. Thank you. You are so kind. And when he got back, nothing. Well, there was some, but I decided to share. Good job, Dad. Do you want a piece of bread this plenty? Mm. And while they slept,
is too much. Is this really happening? I think I'm starting to understand what the person meant about the bowl. They said it would help us on our journey, that there were no quick fixes, but that uh, help would come in surprising ways. Well, this is certainly surprising. And the more that we share, the more help we can give others. And the more we can give to others. <laughs> yeah. Christmas came. And there was a little something special in the bowl that day. Mom, Dad, Santa found me. I wasn't sure he would, but he did. That's wonderful. The family stopped asking how the bowl worked. They were just so grateful for what it provided and grateful to be able to share with others in need. And they were never quite sure what would show up in the bowl each morning. All right. Who shared their mittens? Do you really need to ask? <laughs> they were careful to use only what they needed, share what they could, and save the rest. Twas the night. Twas the night before New Year's and out on the street. That's not how it goes. Fine. New Year's Eve day came and father was out on his corner. It was a particularly good day. There are so many generous people in the world. Which meant father could be extra generous with others. Here you go. He went home with just enough to feed his family. Everyone was so kind today. I was able to help a lot of people. I hope there's enough. Well, I like that line from Mary Poppins. Enough is as good as a feast. Well, then this is a feast indeed. The family was happy. Even without a home of their own. They were safe and warm, and they had enough. Happy New Year! Not yet, but almost. Do you think you can stay awake? Yes! And just as the clock struck midnight, Mom, look! I see! They held each other tightly and watched in wonder as the bowl was filled to overflowing. It's you. Uh-huh. Can I take it? Sure. You've done so well. But we thank thank you for all that you've done. No, no. Thank you for all that you've done. You discovered the secret of the bow. Not everyone does that. Well, well, to be honest, uh, Alice figured it out really. Well, still, that's something. Listen to the advice of a little child. Not everyone would do that either. Be well. Thank you.
The family went out to celebrate the new year, knowing their lives were changed for the good. Uh, got any uh, change? I do. Uh, would you be able to spare some? Well, I could. But I think I have something much better. Thank you all so much. Wow. Oh, and thank you all my beautiful cast. Well done. Well, well, well done. Um, yay, cast. Um, oh, I, oh, thank you. Um, there are, oh, thank you. This is Susan and Jenna. They are, the, Jen, sorry, the co-chairs of the art committee. Um, I have to say that, um, 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to put it down over here. Keep putting things other places. Thank you. Um, it really does take a community. And one of my favorite things about the pageant is that it brings so much of our UUFF community together because it's all ages. We've got little ones, grown up ones. We've got the music committee. Thank you, Jason, for everything. We've got, um, we've got Friendship who puts up these beautiful wreaths. We've got our building crew, uh, buildings and grounds, Bruce, who helped make everything look so wonderful. We also have to thank Max Johns. We have to thank our, our media ninjas in the back. Woohoo! We have just so many. Paula Barnes, who does costumes. So it brings so much of our community together. And I am so very grateful. Um, I feel like I have more to say. And the cast, you're beautiful. You can go back to your seat, Arden. It's cool. Yay, Arden. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the time for, for um, acknowledging. I feel like, and Jenna. Cooper, my prop mistress extraordinaire and her family, because they, honestly, I, I showed up at rehearsal. Jenna gets here with a paper and starts making a list of all the props who ne we needed. And as you can see, we needed quite a few. So thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you. Am I forgetting anybody? Anybody? Did I forget anybody? I said my husband and my husband. Oh, did I say my husband? And my husband, who is also our set guy. Thank you, friend. Thank you, honey. What? I said Bruce. Oh, yeah. Pay attention. Yeah, definitely said Bruce. Okay. Um, this is the time for uh, congregational reflections. If anybody has anything to say, uh, is now is a good time. Otherwise, anyone? Anyone? Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, let's see. I have no idea what is coming next. So thank you everyone. And thank you to my committee. What? Oh, Jen is going to come back and do closing words. Talk amongst yourselves. They should be here. There. Thank you. And now, if you can join me with our closing words. Go forth, because we are always going forth from somewhere. Going from our homes, our childhoods. Going from our cities and countries. Going from innocence to experience to enlightenment going into mystery and questions, going into the desert, getting to the other side. Go forth, leave behind the comfort and community of one place, head into the anxiety and the loneliness of another, carry with you the love and laughter of this place. And let it light your way, carry with you the wisdom you learned and the good memories, May they give you strength for your journey, and when you have been away long enough, far enough, done what you'd set off to do, been there so long that place too starts to feel like home, come back. Come back, the one universal everywhere and every win and every one inclusive home, this beloved community of all creation that you can never really leave. Now I would invite you to um, read the words on the screen as we extinguish our chalice and end our pageant day. Thank you again for being here, everybody. Ready? We extinguish this chalice, but not the light of love and service. May it be a catalyst for spiritual growth and social justice. As we carry it outside yeah, these walls, walls, the world, the world we, live we live in, in until we, we are, are together, together again. again. Thank you. Go in peace.
I think Anne wants to make sure. Oh, sorry. I was trying to use my, my big inside voice. Um, Anne would like to get a picture of the whole cast and crew. So if we can kind of gather. Oh, I know, Evelyn. Oh, oh, poor Evelyn. Come on. You can do it. Cast to the stage.